So here's my bold promise for each and everyone. I got it. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to help you determine what version you are in. Now, I know that sounds an awful. Stick with me a second. You'll understand it here. I'm going to help you bust through some obstacles, the five biggest obstacles that you will face as a real estate investor. And this is coming from 23 years of doing this. And I'm going to help you get some next step action plan for you. Okay, so first and foremost, I was um, delivering this uh, retreat for, for married men. It's a married men retreat. So it was about this room, about this size. And we were all in this room together. And I was sharing with this group of married men some research, some brand new research. And the research went something like this. It was, there was a direct correlation between the amount of making love with your spouse and your overall happiness. That was the research. So what I did is I got all the men to stand up in the room. Everybody stood up. And I said, gentlemen, by show of sitting down, if you make love with your significant other more than once a week, please sit down. And he was like this over here, his big smiles, all the people were, and I'm saying, you are the ones that are the happiest people in this room. So there's still some people standing up, okay? And I said, okay, what about the rest of you? If you make love with your significant other more than once a month, please sit down. Everybody sat down except for one person, front row. And he had the biggest smile on his face. He was sitting there smiling away, and he's just smiling away. I said, you, you did hear this exercise, sir, did you not? And I'm sitting there and go, brah, like, bro, like, really, like, how often you make love with your wife? And he goes, once a year. And I said, once a year? And he goes, yeah, and tonight's the night. So for you, tonight might be that night where you get inspired. Tonight might be the night that you hear something that you maybe have never heard before. Tonight might be the night that you meet somebody. And tonight's the night that we're going to talk about getting started in real estate. Now, here's the one thing that I always share with people when it comes to getting started. A lot of people always sit there and go, well, getting started, what does that mean? Everybody thinks it's about buying your first place, right? Buying property number one. That's what everybody thinks about getting started. I can confidently say right now that I'm 23 years in this business and I'm getting started. And some of you may be going, well, what do you mean, Russ? You guys don't know what version I'm at in my story. Every one of you have a different version about what you're doing. So I'm going to do a cardinal sin here, if you will. Everyone pull out your phone for me. Everyone pull out your phone, please. Everyone pull out your phone, please, please, please. I want you to open your phone up, and I want you to pull up the operating version of your phones. Okay? Everyone pull up. Do you know where to find your operating version? Everyone has an iOS or an Android device or something, and you have an operating system version. Ryan, what operating version do you want? Five point one. That'd be an Android, I would imagine. Five point one. Anyone else? Any Apple users in the room? What version you on? Sixteen point four. You're right up to date, there, brother. I don't know. Anyone else? Anyone else? Show us your versions. Sixteen point two. Anyone else? Four dot one. That would be an Android, right? Four dot one. Who else? Sixteen point three. Thirteen. Fourteen. Thirteen. Nice, nice. You're a few by, but that's good. Holly, 16.4. Yes, we had a 16.4.1, but 16.4. Good. Anyone else? Anyone else want to shut it up? Okay, so I went through about a, you know, a dozen different people, and everybody was on a different version. Everyone's on a different version of your operating system, of what you're at. So here's the question I'm going to ask you, is what version are you of your real estate story? Like, what version are you in? I, I, I pragmatically and I honestly look back upon my career, I'm on version 4.0 at the moment, version 4. And that's why I say I'm just starting. Now, I could go back and I could document each of the ones there, but I'm on version 4.0 right now. I'm back in acquisition mode about as aggressively as I possibly can with my acquisitions. And that's what I want, first and foremost, each and every one of you guys 
to give a thought about is what version you're at. So honestly speaking here, just by a quick show of hands, how many of you might be version zero in your story? Version zero, be proud, proud, put your hand up high, high, really, really high, really high. Congratulations. This is the place you need to be if you are just getting started, if you're, operate, if you're on version zero. And I think one of the first things we need to do is we need to thank the mogul team with Adrian and James. Is James online? Do you know if James is online? Hello, James. How's it going? You need to be here, brother, by the way. James and Adrian and Rebecca and Jennifer. So we need more groups like this to put on events like this in this room. So I want everybody, please, to put the, your hands together and give a round of applause to the mogul real estate team. Please. Okay, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everybody to stand up for me. Everybody up. Everybody up. Okay, I want you to pull up, pull out your mobile phone for me. Everybody pull out the mobile phone. Put it into selfie mode for me, please. Everyone get it in selfie mode. And what I want you to do is you need to meet two people in the room. You're going to meet two people, and you're going to take a selfie together with two people you don't know. Okay? So go, have some fun with it, first and foremost. Go there, meet two people, take a selfie together, a group selfie. Go for it. Take a picture, meet one person. Come on, get some energy, get those selfies going, get that practice. Come on, get in there. One more, one more picture, one more picture, get in there. One more, one more. All right. Get in here, Varsh. Let's get a picture. Thank you. Right on. Okay, gang. Finish up that picture. Give, a, give yourself a round of applause. And as you're giving yourself a round of applause, please take your seats. Okay. What did I just do? I engaged an audience. Right? To see how the energy in here now is. Now, here's one of the problems you guys have. And I can almost guarantee a problem you have is nobody knows that you're real estate investors in Edmonton. Right? You need distribution of your message. So what are you going to do with that selfie that you just did? You're going to post it wherever you possibly can. And you're going to tag the mogul group, which has an audience and a following. You're going to probably tag myself, which has an audience of a following. And you're going to post something like this, learning some fundamentals about the hottest real estate market in Canada. If you're interested in finding out more, hit me up. And then when somebody hits you up, what are you going to do? Then you're going to talk about something you love. That's going to be real estate. Okay? So especially if you're just getting started, gang. You need distribution. You need distribution of a message. You need distribution. You don't know how many people are out there looking for advice, looking for a good place to park money in a good real estate market. I have on, on every week, I literally have one conversation a day with somebody about investing in it. Minimum. One of, and I, I could probably crank that up a little bit more, and I'm going to be very, very shortly um, because. The getting is good here in this town, okay? But people need to know who are the boots on the ground. I guarantee you, like, I'm going to get you guys a, as an exercise to do. Next time you're on YouTube, okay, go into YouTube and type in, maybe go into incognito mode because maybe you've already been searching. If you go into YouTube and type in Edmonton Real Estate Investments or Edmonton Real Estate Investing, tell me how many of my videos you see there. I bet I have six in the top 15 of all of YouTube. I don't even live here. Hmm? And I have people coming to me as a de facto expert in investing in Edmonton. Because I put out content on literally a weekly basis. I put out a podcast and I put out a YouTube video every week. And if any of you, any of you listen to my podcast, any of you listen to my podcast, do I talk about Edmonton? All the time, don't I? Talk about projects, things I'm looking at. I even shot a really quirky video that took me almost six months for the team to edit, where we were out looking at properties in the middle of winter and we had the big fuzzy hats on, right? So, 
And I have one of my most popular ones, you wouldn't believe how much traffic I get is my Calgary versus Edmonton video, where I compare and contrast the two markets. I think it's time to update that one again and bring it out again. But I literally get one lead every probably four or five days that fills in a form to come to have a conversation with me about investing in Edmonton. Okay, and then I have a way to help those people that are looking to invest in Edmonton. Okay, so this is me, everybody. First and foremost, this is the slide I'm gonna go through the quickest. It's probably the most boring slide of all, is this is me. And what I do is I help real estate investors start, grow, and scale the real estate investing portfolio of your dreams. I'm an investor, I'm an author, I'm a coach. I'm first and foremost a real estate investor. I bought my first place in 2002. For a streak of five years, I bought a property a month for five years. One of the stupidest things I could have ever done. I doubled my portfolio in Edmonton in 2007, 2008. I know already you can already feel the pain, can't you? I am um, still living through a lot of that pain. I bought a property in December. I bought a property in January. I bought a, we had an offer accepted on Monday. I wrote three more offers on Tuesday. And before I leave town, I'm open to write another three. So I'm an active real estate investor. I'm not just somebody that just comes up and just coaches and talks the talk. I actually eat my own cooking. And I think in order to be a good coach, you actually have to do, you have to eat your own cooking at the same time. Okay, so. One of the one biggest, of the biggest questions, questions that was posed to me when I first got started, and this is one of my favorite questions I ask people all the time, is the question of what's stopping you? What's stopping you? Belden, what's stopping you? Got a bad name, right? So you're just finally down to just human pace, right? Now, what's stopping you is a very powerful question, right? Because it really will cut to the chase. And if you're telling yourself the truth and not some bunch of BS answer, it will probably come down to one of five things that's stopping you. And what I'm going to share with you here tonight is one of the things I'm going to share with you is the top five things that will stop you. But let's, let's do group here, group exercise. So also the, those of you that are um, watching online, think about this for a second, okay? Okay. Shout out what's stopping you. Shout out something that would stop you. Would stop, pardon me, knowledge. Good one, excellent. Anyone else? Info, inflow, deal flow, deal flow. Love it, absolutely. Confidence, right? Excellent. Money, 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 money. Money. Sorry, channeling my Pink Floyd there. Anyone else? Come on, that's it. So, pardon me, commitment. Fear, I heard that a couple places. What else? Come on, be honest here, gang. You have to get to the bottom of this. If you don't know what's stopping you, then obviously, are you buying all the properties you need or buying all the properties you want, right? I was just at a conference and I was having a conversation with um, people in the billion dollar range of properties, like billion dollar valuations. And uh, one of the ones, is Grant Cardone was there, you know, take him or leave or whatever. However, he's about, I think he's at about $5 billion of real estate and he has not taken one loan from a bank. A-Rod is there, Alex Rodriguez. That guy's got 20,000 units, 20,000 apartment units and 10,000 homes. A-Rod. I thought it was quite uh, comical when the, the presenter or the host sat there and went up to him and said, uh, hey, A-Rod. How do you raise capital? And he went out and he just went on. And he went on. And he gave it. It was awesome. It was nice and calm and humble. And, I, and I'm sitting there in the back. I go, you want to know the real answer? How A-Rod raises money? Hi, I'm A-Rod. Right? That's what he all he has to probably do is just use a celebrity to just go and raise money. That would be like, that'd be like um, the analogy I, I thought was funny was I, I used was, um, that'd be like going asking Brad Pitt on how to meet women. Uh, Brad, so uh, can you give me some advice on how to meet women? Um, hello? <laughs> I'm Brad Pitt, right? So, so it was kind of funny, but the, but the thing I'm trying to say is, gang, 
you need to start thinking a little bit bigger, okay? So everybody kind of shared a lot of the top things. The top five, I've been doing this for 25, 20, almost 25 years. It boils down to five things. There are five things, and the five things spell out the acronym TEAM, T-E-A-M. So first and foremost, you actually don't need to be good at math. Because how many letters are in team? Four, but there's five things. Hmm, interesting. So anyways, you'll get the joke in a second. <laughs> so first and foremost, what do you think T stands for in the acronym? Time. I'm surprised nobody said time. Time is one of the biggest obstacles, one of the biggest excuses. It's one of the biggest things that when I'm coaching people or getting people to do, I get really to the bottom of how much time people have. A lot of people want to get into doing, you know, flips and developments and all these ex multifamily sounds so cool. And then when I dive into it and I dig deeper in, how much time do you have to do this? I go, well, I don't have any time. Well, that's probably not the strategy for you. Maybe a nice, like uh, Adrian presented, a nice little turnkey property might be what you want to do. Okay. But sometimes some people have all the time in the world. And then what you do with your time is what's most important. One of the things that... Um, my coaching clients just absolutely hate the most is when I surprise them and I say, Let me, let's look at your calendar for today. What are you doing today? Give me your five things you're doing today. And they hate it when I surprise them with that. Because what you spend your time on is what you're gonna, your focus will be, right? And I put through people through an exercise where we start with our values, our vision. We actually do vision boarding. And then we determine our values. And then we determine our 12-month goals. And then we get our 90-day deliverables. And then we get right down into what are you delivering every single day, five things every day, which line up to your 90-day deliverables, which line up to your 12-month goals, where it's in alignment with your values and your vision. Now you are powerful in what you're doing. Now you take control of your time. And holy macaroni, it's warm in here. woo -wee. So that's the first one is the obstacle of time. The second one is education. Now, a lot of you said it could be disguised as knowledge, right? A lot of people might just sit there and go, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have the, the knowledge, but you're doing something tonight by being in a room like this. This is the place you need to be and learn how to do this. And I often find a lot of people sometimes way stretch themselves on the education side to the point where they're trying to do too much, but they're not educated to do, and they don't have help or support to do it. And then they get so overwhelmed that take a guess what happens. Nothing. So, but if you actually just bit off and just did one thing at a time, if you actually just did five things a day, you'd be shocked at what you can progress to in a few years. Like, for example, within my, my investing career, I started off with buying a townhouse. Right? And then I bought more townhomes. And then I bought more townhomes. And then I bought some more townhomes. I bought more townhomes. I transacted over 100 in town here. And then I started after the, that, and some of them crashed and burned and flamed out and all those kind of things. And some of them were in terrible areas that I've had multiple gunfires and the Edmonton Police Services knew my phone number to call me because, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a gunfire in, uh, uh, episode in your, in your condo again there, Mr. Westcott. I go, oh, you know my first name? Or my last name, they go, yeah, we just, right, they, they pulled the title and all that kind of stuff. And I've seen it all over the years. I really have. And then I went into buying new homes, new construction, okay? And then I bought some more of those, so I own the end product. And then I figured out backwards, so now we're working our way backwards in the chain. We're now building them, building brand new houses. And then we're taking another step back in the chain, and now we're developing and we're getting some infill land positions. That's what we're doing here right now, where we're taking where there was once one, and when I'm done, there'll be six to eight. Now, I'm from Saskatchewan. My math isn't my strong suit. But when you start with one, and when you're done, there's six, that's usually a good thing. Usually. Now, and I tell the story, um, it's funny. I don't, how much, I'm going to go a little, uh, a little um, tangent here. So, where I grew up, when I started investing in real estate. I was renting a basement suite in Burnaby, British Columbia. Burnaby. So I'm sitting there, I was looking, and then all of a sudden in the neighborhood, I started seeing these properties, these houses that were being torn down, and they were taking them, and people were building 
front and back duplexes on it. So where there was once one house, they subdivided it and put a front and back duplex on it. So where there was once one, there's now four. Okay, I'm sitting there looking and I'm looking over beside us. There was this empty lot, a corner lot, really juicy corner lot. Now I just got started. This is over 20 years ago. And I just got started. And I just bought one little townhome in Edmonton for 88,000 bucks. Ironically, that same townhome and that same complex is worth 105. Beyond, right? I just saw a sale going in that complex. Um, it was a bad area and a bad tenant profile. Okay, so I'm sitting there. So I saw this little piece of land right beside me. I found the owner of the land. I wrote them a letter. That was before internet, right? Before you could find people. Came back and they got back to me and I said, yeah, I'd be interested in buying the, the land beside us, the empty land. The person come back and said, yep, we'll probably sell it to you for 450000 bucks." $450,000 for one piece of land and it's empty and then, and then I probably got to build something on it. And then I actually met somebody who was doing it and I actually asked them to run me through the numbers. So they were buying them for about 450,000. They were putting about 1.3 million in build cost into it. So they're into it for, let's call it 1.8, give or take. And they were selling each front and back was selling for $500,000 each. So 500 times four is what? 2 million minus 1.8, 200,000. So there's about $200,000, right? Give or take 10% margin. I just pulled up on realtor.ca today, one of those half duplexes in that area. Now this is a half duplex in Burnaby, British Columbia, 1,100 square foot half duplex is selling for $1.3 million. So, so someone take 1.3 times four for me. 5.2 million. Those four places today are worth $5.2 million. And because I was too damn scared and too damn shitless and did not have the education, I missed out on what, $3 million, $3.2 million over 20 years. And they'd probably be free and clear too be honest, in 20 years. Now, just think about this for a second. A semi, like a half a duplex for 1.3 million, two of them together would be what is that? That's not a 2.6. Do you guys know how much it costs to own two uh, both ends of a duplex here in Edmonton? We're building side-by-side -side duplexes with suites and two garage suites, including the land for under 1.7 million. And with the new financing that we're getting on, we're getting 95% loan to value takeout mortgages at the end. We're into them for about 140, at the most 140,000 bucks for a $1.7 million asset. Now I'm not saying it's gonna to go to 5.2, I would not be opposed to that. So I made a point of if I ever saw an opportunity like that come again, I'm not going to be so scared that I'm not going to pull the trigger. That's what I'm doing here in Edmonton. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. Now, I've never developed properties before. I'm in the process right now of doing that. I've got some of the best coaches and mentors and people that are walking me through that. I got a team of builders, a team of people that were doing all this. And that's what I'm writing offers you wouldn't believe what you guys can buy land positions in this town for. Like it's, Edmontonians are the hardest people to convince to invest in your home backyard. You guys really are. Because you're, you're, you're either you're jaded or it's one bit, once bitten, twice shy. I talk about some of these numbers to somebody from anywhere else in the country and they're going, awesome, can we get two or three? But that, that's their answer. It truly is. But here in Edmonton, it's like, well, I'm just going to wait and see. <laughs> I don't know what's quite going on here. Like, holy moly, that place was three, it's 325. You know, a year ago was like 310. That's too much. Right? That's Edmontonians that talk like that. But anyways, sorry, I digress. That's education. The next is attitude. You need to have a good attitude. Attitude, you need to have the right mindset. Now, I know everybody is here tonight on this warm Nice, uh, soon to be June. Is it June? Next tomorrow. Tomorrow. Happy rent day in advance, by the way. Everybody? 
Any of you sit there and go, yeah, rent day. Love it. Or do you, is it, is it rent day to you or is it mortgage payment day? Both, but is, are you a little more happy that it's rent day? Let's hope. Good. Excellent. But you need to have a good mindset. You truly do. And what is your attitude to, to fall flat on your face? What is your attitude to make a, an absolute mess of things? What is your attitude to make a mistake? What is your attitude about taking on risk? Do you have a good mindset? And then the last one in the form, the second last one in the formula is money. You need access to capital. You truly do. Um, sometimes it doesn't need to be your capital, but you do need access to capital. And that's one of the things that I've literally wrote the book on. I built my entire portfolio on raising capital from partners and providing some really good investable opportunities. And I'm still doing that to this day. Okay. And then the last one, obviously, the biggest obstacle is team. Do you have a team? Do you have a team of people that you can rely on to help you build out your portfolio? So think about this. And, and this is a conversation I have with people all the time. And I sit there, people sit there, they come up and they go, well, I'm looking to get started. Okay, let's sit down. How much time do you got? Little or lot? Got lots. Good. Okay, lots of time. Where's your education level? Have you bought a property? How many properties have you bought? What kind of transactions have you done? Where are you? Well, we're not sure what type to do, where to go. Okay, so you have lacking education. Okay, how's your attitude? What's your mindset? Oh, gung ho, bring it on, right? 10x everything. I'm going to do it all. Okay, got a great attitude. Do you have any capital? Um, no. Okay, so you have no education and you have no capital. No problem. That's good. But you have time and you have a great attitude. So now we know where to start. We need to start educating you on where, what, and how to invest in real estate. And then we need to get you to start getting out there and raising some capital, potentially. Or figuring out ways on buying properties without getting capital, right? So lots of things there. And that's usually the exercise I get people to, to hone in where do we need to go. All right, so that's the first concept I want to share with you tonight is the team analogy. Now, the next one is a fun one is it's proximity is power. Now, I know many of you have heard about this, and I heard this many times, and I saw a cute little meme that was floating around this, it was this past week, and uh, it sounded really good, and I said, I'm going to dive into the research a little bit more, and the research on this, and I came across this study. There was actually a study done by the Harvard, it was the Harvard Business, Harvard Business Review study, and what they did was they studied how to make remote work better, for one. They studied 2,000 people over two years, okay? What they evaluated was worker performance over those 2,000 people over two years. They measured it based upon productivity, effectiveness, and quality, three measurements. Then what they found out in doing this study that people that were sitting 25 feet apart, if you were sitting 25 feet away from a high producer, your output was 15% higher just because you were in proximity to a high producer. Okay? You see what I'm saying? If you even, you don't even have to be any smarter. You don't even have to know anymore. All you do is you're sitting closer to somebody who's a high performer and your performance is 15% higher. But the interesting thing they found as well was that if you were sitting beside a low performer, you are actually 27% worse off in your productivity. So gang, proximity is power. And here's a fun story I'm going to share with you. So I was at this conference, 2,500 people out in Toronto. Number one thing, take a guess what I was out there to do. I'm not buying real estate in Ontario. I wouldn't touch it with, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole out there. And we can get into that in the Q&A if you want. What was I out there to do? Pardon me? I, sorry, I didn't hear that. <laughs> Theme park, yes. I was out there to test proof of concept of what I'm doing. I was out there to test my, my messaging of the properties that I'm buying. I was out there to raise capital is what I was doing. And it was mostly, I was also it was like a family reunion because I know an awful lot of the people out there. And one day at lunch, I decided to, I saw these two young, young fellows sitting down at a table at lunch. Okay. And I said, you know what, I, one of the things I like to do is just pour into people. I pour in, I've been blessed for doing this for 23 years, and I've stood on the shoulders of giants, and it is my obligation to share with others what I know. It is my obligation. So I saw these two young guys, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go have lunch with those two guys. Sat down with them. And they were just new. They're both 21 years old. 
they were all excited about getting going. I walked them through that team exercise, time, education, attitude, money. So I walked them through that. I said, I'm going to prove something to you guys here for a second. Proximity is power. I just sat down with you guys, and I'm going to pull a few of my friends that walk by, just random people that I know walk by, and then we're going to have a conversation with you. So I pulled one, two. There was five people that walked by, and between those five people, including myself, the five people and myself, we have transacted over a billion dollars of real estate. So these two young 21-year-olds got a firsthand experience of people, like first one was coming by, well, Brian, how many properties do you have? I've done 250. Okay, Ken, how many have you done? Well, I'm in the 400s. Well, Brian, pull us. Where are you guys at? Well, we're at 600 million. And these two young guys were going, holy moly, and they're sitting there. And do you think that just by being in proximity to people doing deals, they came and they found me at the end of the conference. And they said that lunch that we had together just because they had proximity to people that were in real estate was the best part of the conference for them. And then when I told them, I gave them my number, I gave them my phone number, my email, and I said, in 90 days, because we walked through and we put a little action plan together for them, like what I'm going to do with you guys a little bit. And I said, in 90 days, if I don't hear from you, I will be extremely disappointed. But what's the first thing I'm going to ask you when we talk in 90 days? Did you do the work? If you didn't do the work, you know, my next conversation is going to be, call me in 90 days when you actually do it. And I'll probably give them two chances. Okay? So that's the key thing is you just want to have proximity. And that's one of the things that I just love. I see in the back here, I have some, some good friends that I haven't been seen for like, you know, Arlen and Valden and the team. It's been 20 some years since, I, since we first got started. And we just had proximity to people that were just doing deals. That's why I applaud each and every one of you guys for coming out here. Okay? Surround yourself with people doing deals. Surround yourself with people in action and then keep going from there. Okay, so that's proximity is power. So the next concept I'm going to share with you is the four C's of getting started. So no matter what version you're on, these four C's are applicable to you. So I'm going to share with you a secret formula. Secret formula is as follows. And now if you have a pen and paper, I encourage you to write these ones down. Okay? So here's the secret formula. Here's the four C's. Number one is competence and confidence. The next two are commitment and courage. So those are the four C's to getting started. Now you want to know the secret? You want to know the secret in this? Number one is you need to have the right sequence. The sequence matters. Here's the cool thing. Commitment plus courage equals confidence, and the more confidence, or sorry, commitment plus courage equals competence, and then the more competence you have leads to the confidence. Okay, so here's, what does all that mean? When I first got started in real estate, I was renting a basement suite. I had never bought a property in my life. I had no money in the bank account, um, but I had a good job and I could qualify for financing, but I was also learning from some of the best. At that time, I had a commitment that I was going to make this work. And I had some courage. I had some courage that I would go up and I would talk to people. I would go talk to a good friend of mine. First one was, uh, was a hiking buddy of mine. And we were spend four hours hiking mountains. And he had bought properties and stuff like that. And, and I asked him. I got the courage to ask him if he'd ever want to invest in a deal. But what I was showing to him was I was going to Edmonton. I was flying to Edmonton. I was analyzing properties. You see what this, you know, I, I'm shy and introverted. And, but I was just putting it out there of all the action I was doing. And you see what I was doing. And he saw the, he saw the commitment that I'd made. He saw the courage. And eventually, which led to the competence. And then the more competence I had, which led to the confidence. Everybody always wants confidence. I, I talk to the, a lot of people all the time. They say, well, just give me the confidence. Okay, you need to have commitment first, or how committed are, how bad do you want it? Do you want it as bad as oxygen? Do you want it that bad? Yeah, absolutely, I believe you. How courageous are you? Are you willing to go talk to somebody in the family? Maybe go willing to talk to, go talk to mom or dad to invest alongside you with something. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Right, okay, well, you're not missing one of them. 
And then after you did that, then you get the competency. And then from the work comes the competence. All right. So that's the third, is the third concept I want to share with you. The last one I want to share with you is um, these are three skills. These are three skills that I think every real estate investor must master. Not just dabble, not just if it's convenient, not just, well, that would be nice. You need to master this. You truly need to master it. So skill number one, grit. Another word of saying, the way of saying is mental toughness. You need to have grittiness. You need to be able to hear the word no. You need to honor, if you say you're going to do something, you need to do it. But most importantly, you need to be able to do something when you don't feel like doing it. Feelings and your mood is, sorry, I was about to swear there. It's actually BS. You don't know how many times I don't feel like doing anything. They, you know, much rather, you know, a lot of people say, well, just do what you love and the money will come. Well, yeah, I love to sit in the couch and watch golf. I haven't found anyone to pay me for that yet. Right? But you know what I also like to do? Analyze deals. Analyze deal flow. Take a look at things across the country. I love putting presentations together. I love connecting capital to projects. I'm not a great operator. I'll, I'll be admit that if I'm, that's one of the worst things, and that's what I have to backfill with the team is an op is being an operator of the business. I'm and I will tell you the truth in saying that, but I have people that will do that for me. My job is to be the rah 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 Cisco and Ba guy and connect capital to, to projects. That's what I do. I have people that do the other things of finding the deals and you know, getting the financing and the property management. I Somebody asked me the other day, well, yeah, geez, walk me through your first eviction you ever had. I don't know. I've never done one. What do you mean? You, you all those properties? But I said, I've never done one. I've had lots of evictions, but I've never, ever once had to be part of one, ever. I have a team of people that do that. I would be horrible property manager. I don't have the patience for it, for number one. As a matter of fact, every year, it's funny, I just had it again. Every year when I sit there, every year at the end of the year, when I'm doing my year-end books and I see the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it goes out in property management, the property management line, I sit there and I go, geez, if I just brought that in-house. If I brought that in-house and maybe my wife, I'll get Kareem to do it. Kareem can do this. She's really good. She's organized. She works really well. And then all of a sudden I go up to, to, to the mirror and I slap myself upside the head twice and say the divorce would be more money than the hundreds of thousands, hundreds of, thousands of dollars in, in property saving of property management. And then I gladly agree with the property manager for the fee for the next year. Right? Let people do what they do best. I'm not a good property manager. I would be a horrible property manager. It'd, I'd be like that meme of sitting there going, person saying, I don't want any smokers. I don't want any kids. I don't want any of this. Matter of fact, I changed my mind. I'm not written to all of you. Go after yourself. Right? That would be my ad out there, right? Because that's, that's what I say. So you need to have grit. You need to truly have some grit in this game. So that's number one. Number two, sorry to tell you all, you need to be have the skill, the skill of selling. You need to be able to, and here's the thing, most people get it, most people get sales all wrong. Most people think if it's something that you have to go and you have to be in somebody's face and you have to present them and you have to convince somebody to do something they don't want to do. The best salespeople out there are good listeners. The best salespeople out there are people that can just ask amazing questions that basically lead a conversation to the person that you're talking to, to eventually it becomes their idea. Those are the best salespeople you will ever find. And somebody who just you know, Arlen Dolan is one of the best at this. If you guys want to follow a good Facebook feed, follow, make sure you follow Arlen. He does some, such an amazing job and such amazing value on his Facebook feed for free. Okay? And he's one of the best at this. He's one of the best people for asking amazing questions that people eventually come to the conclusion that you wanted them to come to and it's their idea. Right, and you'll know when you're good at it when you do. But how do you get good at it? Like anything, you need to do the reps. 
the more reps you do, the better you get. The more conversations you do, the better you do. The more the more knows you hear, the better you will. Okay. So that's skill number two. And then the third skill is leadership. Okay. You have to be able to lead people, lead others. Another thing of leadership that a lot of people don't actually consider is what I'm doing right now is actually leadership. I'm standing in front of a group of people online and in person, and I'm delivering a message. I'm being a good leader in the community. Not enough people take this skill that I'm talking about and I'm doing right now, take it seriously enough. I have um, podcasts and I do YouTube videos and I interview people all the, all the time. And I'm shocked at um, a lot of the people that don't put a lot of time and effort into delivering a message, communicating a story. Have I told an awful lot of stories tonight so far? Yeah, you feel, you feel the story. That's by design. I work a lot of these stories out in advance and I have a whole bunch of stories that I can share, you know, just by doing this for all these years. But this is a skill. And somebody once asked us, oh, have you been uh, speaking, uh, doing this? This is probably presentation number 1100 for me over the years. And this does not take, it, sorry, what I want to say. This is a trainable skill and not enough people will actually take the time to learn it. The scale, if you have aspirations of scaling your business, which some of you I sure hope do, you have to have somebody step up and be able to deliver an inspiring message to a group of people. If you don't have anybody in, in your organization to do that, or you, you're, you are in a small fish bowl and you will not grow to the level you want to get to. Okay, and I have the conversations all the time and after a podcast episode, and I usually debrief with a lot of the people I work with. I say, you need to work on storytelling, you need to work on your projection, you need to work on engagement, you need to work on your intention. Like, I'll give you an example. This is something I shared with the other day. Was, um, everybody has, they always will ask, well, what's your origin story? Like, how did you get started? And you would be shocked at how many people say, well, you know, uh, I read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I got really inspired, and then I started buying real estate. Any of you kind of, is that your kind of your origin story? How many of you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that kind of got you started? Now, I too got my start from reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, I'm going to share with you how I tell that same story. So I don't just say I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. My, mine goes as following. They usually say, what's your origin story? Well, you know what? My story starts and goes back to the turn of the century. I got a giggle already. So and then I usually make the joke and say, yeah, you know, the year 2000. I had one of those birthdays that ended with a zero in it. I turned 30. I, you know, I had Peter Pan syndrome at year 30. You know what Peter Pan syndrome is? You never want to grow up. Right? I had a really great job. I had a fast car, you know, an SVT convertible Mustang, flying down the road at Burnaby, top down, wind flowing through my fingertips. And you know what? I turned 30 and I was a little bit lost. I was climbing the corporate ladder and the ladder was up, leaned up against the wrong wall. And what is every young man at age 30, where do they go for spiritual guidance? I turned to Oprah. And on Oprah that day, I saw Robert Kiyosaki and he talked about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I went and I devoured that book and read it back to front, back to front. And then I continued the story from there. I had chuckles, I had engagements, I had smiles, I had laughs. Do you see the difference in telling the exact same thing? I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I decided to buy real estate versus the way I told the story. Okay, That's a trainable skill, and I would encourage each and every one of you to lean into that skill. Okay, so a couple next steps for you, and then I'm going to open up for questions if you guys are open to questions. If anyone open for some questions, some Q&A? Please? Okay. okay. All right. So a couple next steps for you is I encourage you to start today. Like truly, just start today, wherever you're at. Start today. Do something today. Right? You need to, first of all, identify the version that you're at. You need to then take a look at the TEAM acronym. Or what are you lacking? Time, education, attitude, or money, or TEAM. What are you lacking? And start the, putting a plan together for that. 
And then those big three of the skill development, which of the big three are you going to lean into and learn? And then the last one I'm going to share with you is remember that you're worth the investment. You truly are worth the investment into you. Okay. Now I'm going to end off here with um, a quick story. So if any of you are ever interested, I do have a podcast. Um, what are we at? We just released 160. Today was 166 episodes. Okay. So if any of you uh, would like to dive into an amazing podcast, sorry if I, <laughs> sorry, yes, Russ, your podcast by a survey of one is absolutely amazing, by the way. So if you're interested, uh, by all means there, or if you're interested, if, you're, if your YouTube's more your thing, I actually have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you want to jump into there, you know, there's a whole bunch. Arlen and I have done many. Arlen, we're going to do more, by the way. If you want there, if you want to do YouTube, subscribe there. Okay. So here's the final story I'm going to leave with you. This is the following. It's one of a, a core story. And some of you might have heard it before. I've used it multiple times. Like how it's, a, it's a good way to end off on a presentation. So there was this um, young fellow, and he was having a hard time with life. He was sitting there, and, you know, life was just kind of sucky at the moment. He was sitting down one morning over a cup of coffee with his mom, and he was saying, Mom, you know what? Life sucks. Mom's going, oh, dear, you know, can't my baby boy, can't, you know, can't have life sucking right now. T tell me about what's going on. Well, you know, work's not fulfilling. Relationship just is kind of not going anywhere. I just feel like I'm going nowhere fast, right? And, you know, this whole, you know, inflation stuff, and I can't buy a house, and it's just so, everything's so darn expensive. I just, I just can't, I just can't put it together. I can't get it in gear. The loving mother looks at her son and says, son, why don't you go do me a favor? Go over to the stove, grab three pots out, fill them up halfway each with water, put them on three burners, okay? Turn up, crank up the heat, crank up the heat. And then when you, after you go over to the fridge and grab some carrots, some eggs, and then go grab a coffee filter and grab some coffee beans as well, okay? In the first pot, when the boil water came to boil, threw the, the carrots in, the second pot put the raw eggs in, and then the third one put the coffee beans in a filter in pot number three. Okay? And then they sat and they chatted a little bit more, and they waited for the water to boil, and the water's boiling, and kept boiling. And then after, you know, about 10, 15 minutes, they said, turn off the heat, pull off each of the pots of water, and let's take a look at it. So the first one, what did you put in? You put carrots. Okay, tell me about the carrots. Sun poked them a little, they're all mushy. I go, how did the carrots go into the boiling water? Well, they went in really, they went in hard hard raw carrots. They went into the boiling water hard and they came out soft. Okay, good, you learned the first lesson. What about the eggs, the second pot? What do you got there? Well, we got hard boiled eggs. So the eggs went in soft and came out hard. Okay, so they went into the boiling water. What do you got in the third pot? Oh, we got coffee. Coffee is life, right? Coffee is good. So what happened? The coffee beans went into the boiling water and what did they do to the boiling water? They changed the environment. They changed the game. So, son, you have a choice in every situation. Every single one of those three pots were the exact same stimulus. Boiling hot water. One went in hard, came out soft. One went in soft, came out hard. The third one went into the environment and changed the game forever. I encourage each and every one of you to be the coffee bean and change your environment for the rest of your lives. Thank you very much.